Hello, I'm Kay Foley of This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and I'm joined today by ABC's George Will. And since we believe all politics is social here, we're putting some of your Facebook questions to George. Thank you for joining us. Glad to. We'll just dive right in with Daniel Hogan's question. When did you first realize that you were smarter than all of the people around you? <laughs> I've never realized that. In fact, I make a point of surrounding myself with people who are smarter than I am, and I have no trouble doing that. Yeah. Excellent. Well, and then the next question comes from Thomas Nixon, who asks, what is the one Inauguration Day tradition that you enjoy viewing as a journalist and as a citizen? I like the lunch afterwards. They, after he's sworn in, he goes in, and sometimes they give real care and thought to the menu, mm -hmm. sometimes replicating the menu of 19th century inauguration. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a nice index of how the world changes. Has there been a particular menu that you've liked best? I can't, not that I can recall. Yeah. Joel Sosa asks, what was the most memorable moment of your career and what was the most embarrassing? The most memorable moment was probably election night 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, it had nothing to do with me, it had to do with the American people because the, the tremendous change in the country that was coming because Ronald Reagan won. And I remember walking back to the hotel on Central Park South from the ABC studios uh, on Central Park West and having the feeling it was uncommonly balmy that night, and having the feeling that there was a wind almost, you could feel history uh, coming, the, the staggering power of the American people. I think that's a phrase that Walter Mondale used when conceding as vice president, when he and, the, and uh, Jimmy Carter lost in 1980, he referred to the staggering power of the American people, something like that. And, uh, on election night, you can feel that, and particularly on a, on a night, and they're, they're reasonably rare, but the nights when the country really does move. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and then William Litzer asks, do you believe that the Republicans have lost touch with famous Republicans, such as Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, or Teddy Roosevelt? Well, let's take them one at a time. <clears throat> Richard Nixon's a very good person to lose touch with. I don't think he was a role model either in his criminality or in his policies, mm -hmm. which uh, in domestic policies, he was probably the most liberal president since Lyndon Johnson. Uh, his foreign policy was mixed. I thought detente was a bad idea uh, at, as applied by him and by uh, Henry Kissinger. And with regard to Ronald Reagan, who was I greatly admired and was a friend, uh, that was 30 some years ago and it's time for Republicans to understand that the issues confronting the country are very different. As Ronald Reagan were he here we would be the first to acknowledge. So I think losing touch with famous Republicans is probably a good idea. And that, do you think or what is the, mo the single most important thing the Republican Party should do to rehabilitate themselves moving towards the midterms in the 2016 presidential race? Well, what will help the Republicans most are events. Mm -hmm. Uh, if Republicans are correct, and I think they largely are, about the arithmetic of our public finances, arithmetic is going to vindicate the Republicans' point of view. Uh, critics of Paul Ryan, for example, say Paul Ryan would end Medicare as we know it. Arithmetic is going to end Medicare as we know it. It's just a matter of time, and everyone, I think, realizes that. So first of all, Republicans have to wait on events to begin to vindicate their prophecies. Beyond that, they have to understand that what worry Americans most are not things like uh, individual tax rates, marginal tax rates on income. A large majority of Americans pay far more in payroll taxes than in income taxes. Great many Americans pay no income taxes. Sixty percent of Americans pay either less than five percent of their income in income taxes or no income taxes. Rather, what worries them are the assault on their standard of living by A, rising college costs driven by the government, and l rising health care costs. A great many American families feel they're one catastrophic illness away from bankruptcy. And um, knowing your love of baseball, uh, what can you tell us about the legacy of Earl Weaver? Uh, Tim Kirkjian, terrific baseball writer for ESPN, uh, says, uh, who knew Earl Weaver, as I did, that Earl Weaver is one of the three greatest managers of all time. Earl Weaver understood the basic point of the money ball approach to baseball, which is, <clears throat> people say baseball doesn't have a clock. Earl Weaver understood it does have a clock. It has 27 ticks, they're outs. 
And what you do is you run the game so as to maximize your chance of not making an out. Walks, on base percentage, all the rest. Never bunt. If you've got 27 outs, don't give them away. So Earl was uh, probably 30 years ahead of his time in, in his intuitive understanding of what Moneyball made explicit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then ch just on a lighter note, uh, what are the chances of the Nationals' appearance in the World Series, especially with all the new trades and acquisitions? Well, particularly with the new trades and acquisitions and re-signing LaRoche, great first baseman, who was probably their most valuable player last year, the Nationals are on paper the best team in the National League. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't play the game on paper. They play it on grass and dirt. But even there, the... the uh, uh, the Nationals should be even better than last year. They'll play in October. We'll see. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. And Glad thank to. you to everyone who submitted questions. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at This Week ABC and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash This Week ABC.